Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today, we'll be building yet another chat application, but what makes this video unique is the great design and completeness of the application. This app will have a sleek midnight theme, be scalable, reliable, and able to handle thousands of users. And best of all, I'm gonna show you how to make your own themes like this midnight gray on your own. Once you log in or sign up, you'll be able to send messages, images, and files, as well as give read receipts, see online statuses of users, and search for other users to chat with. This app will have a high enough quality to put on a portfolio website or integrate into an existing application. You get the gist, so just keep watching and let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna give you all of the working code up front. This way, we have a fully working chat app in one minute. Then, we'll read all the code together to understand it. This way, I save you some time, the tutorial's easier for everybody, and you also learn how to read other developers' code, which is extremely, extremely important as a developer. So, in a nutshell, I'm gonna give you all of the value of this video up front, and you're in for a unique learning experience. So setting up the project is actually really easy. All you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video and download the code right here. Once the code is downloaded and in your IDE, go to chatengine.io, which is the second link in the description of this video, and create your own project. Once you create a project, make sure you have the project ID and private key handy. Then in your downloaded project, we just create a .env.local file to set the environment variables for project ID and private key respectively. Then you run npm install, npm run start, and your project is built, running, and connected to your own chat engine chat server. So let's redo these steps now. So I've already downloaded the code, and the second step, I've already went to chatengine.io, created an account, set up a project, and I have that project ID and private key handy. Then if we hop over to the downloaded code, I've created a .env.local file, and I've set the project ID and project key here and here. And to make sure it's right, you can copy the values from the readme in the first link. Then I opened up a new terminal and I just ran npm install and then npm run start and once those two commands are completed we have the fully working chat app and i can create an account right here and it's going to fully work and because i've signed up a few other users i'm good to chat with them right now and start sending messages there we go we have a fully working chat app where you can send images, talk to other users, create new users, etc. Now let's dive into the code to understand how it works. To start, let's understand the structure of our application. Like most React apps, all of the code we care about lives inside the SRC folder. So let's open that up. And our SRC folder consists of three main components. The auth page, where users can log in or sign up. The chats page, where users can chat with one another. And then app.tsx, to determine which page we render and when. Now, the app.tsx component is very simple. All we do is pull in the user variable from a context we create. And if the user exists, we render the chats page. If the user doesn't exist yet, we return the auth page. And this makes sense. When you first go to a website, you don't have an account yet. You either need to sign up or log in. When you do either of these things, your user data is retrieved and then the chat page renders. And that's exactly what this logic allows us to do. It's important to note that the user variable is pulled from a React context and not local state. What React context allows us to do is set a state variable and setter functions globally. So all components can manage the same state data regardless of where they are in the application. In order to make this work, 
we need to create a context variable, which we can import, and then also create a context provider that we need to set globally, which we do at the top level index.tsx file under SRC. You can see the app is wrapped in a context provider, and that's why when you go into the app, you can now pull that user context. Great, so now let's take a look at the auth page and understand how users can log in and sign up under those two pretty forms. The auth page consists of three main components, a login form and a sign up form, so users can log in and sign up, and a top level auth page component to determine which form we render. The logic for the top level auth page component is very simple. All we have is a state variable called has account. If the user has an account, render the login form. If they don't have an account, render the sign up form. And each form has a callback function to change that value. As you can see by clicking this link and this link here. Now, the login and sign up forms are very basic. They're both vanilla React forms that trigger a REST API call once submitted. Once you submit this form here, a REST API call is triggered to retrieve the account or create a new account. In this case, it's retrieve an account. When the account is retrieved, we use the set user function to update the user context and the chat page should immediately render, as you can see when we submit this form here. Now that we understand how the login form and the sign up form work, within the auth page component. Let's take a look at how the chat page works. The entire chats page could be summed up with the 18 lines of code right here. Now, how our chats page works is that we set up a chat UI using the multi chat window component provided by chat engine. Then to subscribe to our chat server that we set up, we need to set up a multi chat WebSocket, also provided by chat engine. And then to give these two components the logic and data to come to life, we need to run the multi chat logic JavaScript function with your project ID and a user's username and secret. Once this is run and we get the value back, we pass that in as props to the WebSocket and the UI and the entire chat app comes to life. And that's what you can see right here. Now, there's a difference between the default UI that Chat Engine provides and the UI that we're building in this tutorial. Frankly, our UI looks way better, and we do that using two main tools. First of all, I created a theme.css file, which I imported into the project, and basically what this does is it overlays custom CSS on top of every Chat Engine component within the website. The second thing is we use a chat engine native feature called the render functions to replace parts of the component with our own code. Let's go into more detail now. What chat engine render functions allow you to do is replace parts of the multi chat window UI with your own code. So as you can see in the documentation here, this is a render chat settings function that allows you to replace the chat settings column with your own JavaScript or JSX. Now, for fun, what I did is I commented out the render chat settings function from this project. And what you see, if you go back to the chat app, is you have that pretty chat UI we were talking about, but now you got this whole big white chat column to manage the members and the photos and all that extra stuff. Now, we don't want this for the sake of our project. So what I do is I just invoke the render chat settings function and replace it with this little div and a custom CSS tag. So theme.css picks it up. When we click save, the chat settings column has now been replaced by this code. And when you head back, you have a better looking chat application. While we just went into render functions, and I just showed you that example for render chat settings, it's clear that I'm using a ton of render functions above and going into much more complex examples, like render message form to replace the message form with this code right here, render chat header to replace the chat header with this custom code right here, 
I'm also re-rendering the chat cards in multiple places here and here. And then I'm also using render chat form to create this user search functionality. Now I'm happy to show you how each of these subcomponents work and then get plugged back into this app. But I want to see if the, there's a demand first. So if you can comment asking for explanation videos on these subcomponents, then I'm happy to do that subsequent video, assuming that there's enough people. So please let me know your thoughts and I'm generally here to answer your questions too. Have a good day.